Hi, I'm Vic and welcome to Geeko Farm, where we do things differently. So today, we're going to milk an almond. You can use whole almonds or blanched almonds to make almond milk. Now, Suz prefers blanched almonds, so guess which we're using today. It's best if you soak them overnight. So we stick them in a jar of water in the fridge. Uh, you need to drain that off and then put them in the blender. Uh, we use about a cup full of almonds. Once you've got them drained, you uh, stick them in your favourite blender. Ah. There's us. Okay. And then make it up to about the three cups mark with fresh cold water. In its simplest form, you can get away with just doing that. But we like to add a little bit of sunflower oil, say about a tablespoon, and also a little bit of salt. Now, to make sure everything blends up smoothly together and doesn't sort of separate out when you pour the stuff into your coffee, uh, you will also need some lecithin. Now, this is a, a sort of emulsifier. It's natural. It can come from soya or sunflower, um, depending on your allergy preference. And we soak it in the fridge overnight. Um, sort of blends a bit better. You can just throw it in if you like. There we are. Use about a teaspoonful of it for the quantity we're making here. And then you just stick the lid on and uh, blend the bejesus out of it. Well, we did that for a couple of minutes or so, and uh, there you are. mentioned before, the secret is in stopping it from separating. The more particulate matter you have in there, the more likely it is to separate. So, Suz will show you the simple way to get out most particulate matter. But just in case Suz doesn't show up for the filming session, you take one standard hotel linen tea towel. Put it in the jug, pour your almond milk into the jug, carefully fold it all up so that it doesn't leak out of the sides. And get it to the point where you can start wringing the neck of the tea towel. This stuff is warm because of all the energy you put in by the blender when we blended it for two minutes. Be careful not to put your thumb in through the tablecloth. So that means you'll have to do it all over again and you have a tablecloth for the whole minute. Tablecloth? Idiot, not a tablecloth, tea towel, never mind. Yeah, when it starts coming out really fast like that, it means generally I'll put a hole in it somewhere. Yeah. No, this hope so doesn't notice. And when you're done, you'll have a tea cloth full of almond meal, which you can use for other projects. So there you go, almond milk. Now, this stuff's perfectly usable, but again, after a while, particulates will make it separate out. And while most people use this, this is Geeko Farm, and we're going to take it a step further. One moment. 
Ah, Vic in his natural habitat. Right, well, what we have here is 600 mil or so of our almond milk. You don't want to use it any more concentrated than that, otherwise the particles will bung up the filter. All right, we have a Buchner funnel which has lots of little holes in the bottom half which are covered with a drill cotton filter and that fits together like that. On the bottom of that we have something called a Goku ring which is sort of a seal. This is a one litre Nehemiah flask with a side tube which is connected to a vacuum pump capable of pulling 400 millibars of pressure. So, because this causes a vacuum in the glass, there is a danger of bits of said glass flying around, hence safety specs. Alright, it does make a bit of noise, think you can live with it, let's fire it up. The whole point of this is that under suction, the process of filtering is much faster than normal. Allow me to demonstrate. Oh look, it holds about 600 mil. What a coincidence. Now, you notice the fluid is currently dribbling through somewhat slowly. This is rather boring and not what we've got this funnel for. The reason for this is because there isn't a seal formed around on that Goku ring yet. If I push down slightly, it will seal, and then you'll see what Goku funnels do. pulls the almond milk through the filter rather than just letting it drain through by gravity. Thus leaving all the crap in the funnel and beautifully filtered almond milk down the bottom. Now, because there are fewer particles in this almond milk, it's then going to um, have less what they call nucleation centers for all the stuff to come together and form basically horrible lumps on top of your tea or coffee. All right, so we've got about 600 mil there, so uh, let's turn the little sucker off. Yep, that filter is pretty much clogged now. When they're finished, they actually make a strange shlurping noise. Anyway, there is our Airmire flask full of almond milk. Fortunately, most labware is dishwasher safe. Anyway, so we have our 600 ml of almond milk, which we will then put in our one litre container here. You get these from the uh, Moore Wilson's warehouse, very handy. There we go. And you'll notice it's a bit short of a litre. Well, we can top it up. Oh, cheapskate, you may think. You take a whole cup of almonds and you dilute it down to a litre. Well, let me tell you, commercial almond milk has about five almonds per litre. The rest of it is flavouring obtained from almonds that have been blanched, the flavour extracted from the skins, and then put in your almond milk. Most of the uh, white emulsion is, in fact, vegetable oil. Read the packaging carefully. Right, so we'll just give this a quick mix. And it's now ready to put into this tea, which I brewed while the stuff was filtering. Cheers. Well, I hope you enjoyed our almighty assemblage of arcane almond extraction. But for now, that's your lot. Down on Geeko Farm. What? Oh, not now, dog.